One of the problems across Africa and many other developing countries is underinvestment in the grid and in generation. So in many places you have a situation where the grid is provided with power from diesel generators, but also the grid itself is not particularly reliable. So many businesses and homes have a diesel generator that kicks in when the power goes down. So those two things bring together a situation where the power from the grid is very expensive. So people are going to be paying in US cents, 20 to 25 US cents a kilowatt hour um, for their electricity. And then when the grid goes down and they switch on their standby generator, that electricity can be very expensive as well, maybe 30 or 40 US cents a kilowatt hour. Possibly more in very remote areas where the cost of getting the fuel to the generator has to, it, you know, it sort of compounds the cost of the of the electricity. And I know of one example in Sudan, where all of the electricity in the hotel is generated by a standby generator because there is no available grid, and the cost of fuel is such that electricity is one dollar a kilowatt hour. So in the, all of those circumstances, solar can play a role in reducing the dependence on either expensive electricity from a national grid or on self-generated electricity from standby generators. Um, and this is really you know, the focus of Solar Century's hybrid um, offer, is coming up with solar solutions that can work in both of those different circumstances to reduce grid offtake, to reduce self-generation requirements, and therefore um, reduce the overall cost of providing energy to you know, whatever the business um, process is, refrigeration, pumping, lighting, um, or all of the myriad ways we use electricity. So typical photovoltaic systems at the moment are simply grid tied. Um, the, Sun shines, the inverter converts the direct electricity into AC electricity and goes into the grid, and that's it. There's, there's no more complexity to it. But in the situation where you've got a grid that may fail, so you have a power cut and then a switch changes over to a generator supply, the, the ability of the solar to operate in parallel with either the grid or the generator requires a little bit more sophistication, some control to make sure that the power that's delivered is stable. Um, now, operating in parallel with the grid is, is straightforward enough, but when operating in parallel with the generator, the solar needs to be managed so that it doesn't overpower the generator. So you imagine a situation where the generator is running, but someone switches off the factory, so there's no load. The generator is sitting there and the solar is trying to feed power back into the generator. So you need a control to prevent backfeeding into the generator. And in addition, if, for example, a cloud was to go overhead, you need to have a relationship between the solar and the generator so that if the solar stops working because there's a cloud there, that the generator can come back, come back in and provide the, the shortfall. And that control system is necessary to provide a, a stable power supply. Um, and that's what we call the solar fuel saver. Um, it just manages the interface be between the different components. So the, the heart of the solar fuel saver is always measuring what's happening. How much power is the factory using? Is the power coming from the grid or from a generator? How much power is coming from the solar? And it then sort of acts as a graphic equalizer to, to ensure that what the load is seeing is as stable as, as possible. So um, hy hybrid technology is, has been around for some time and it actually covers quite a broad um, definition of how different renewable energy technologies and storage can work together. But the, the market opportunity and the, the, the sort of economic benefit that we're seeing right now is for the situation where factories have got a grid supply which is expensive and have got a, a standby generator to deal with the fact that the grid is intermittent. Um, you know, that's a very common situation in, um, in many African countries, but also isolated you know, island communities, um, parts of India, parts of Australia. The mining communities are relying on diesel generation pretty much 100% for, for their power. So the potential for solar to effectively reduce diesel consumption, but also to work in parallel with diesel. So rather than having um, a 100% renewable energy system. You have uh, the, the use of solar simply to take bites out of the amount of diesel that's used, and that's the, the sort of low-hanging fruit. 
So the, the types of markets that we're looking at are businesses with relatively high electricity demands and also a requirement for firm power. So you think of um, factories with a lot of refrigeration for storing cold flowers, for example, in Kenya. Mining is, is, is another sector which uses a lot of power for pumping water, for ventilation fans, for processing ores and the like. And many of mining sites are remote from the grid. So you know, the, these are businesses which are paying 30 or 40 US cents per kilowatt hour for their, their processing. And you know, putting solar into that is a very simple way to just put, um, reduce the operating costs straight onto the bottom line for those, those businesses.